Hi everyone, Simona here from Vector Twist. As you can see here in the background, we have a beautiful pattern, a Christmas pattern. And today in this tutorial, I would like to show you how you can create such a pattern here in Illustrator. So let's get started. Now here in Illustrator, I have an artboard open and we can see an example of the pattern here that we want to recreate. Before we start with anything, let's go up to Illustrator, Preferences, and let's go to Guides and Grid. Here in the pop-up, you can see that our grid line is set every 72 points. The subdivision is 8. This is usually the standard setup here in Illustrator. So we're going to leave this as is. So just click Cancel. And then we're going to turn on the guides. So let's go to View, Show Grid. And as you can see, we have every 72 points a thicker line. Now we're turning on this grid so we can create our pattern with the exact same space in between without having too much to think about it and calculate and use the transform tool. So let's choose the ellipse tool here in the toolbar. Then we click once on our artboard and here in the pop-up we're going to set it to 144 for the height and 144 for the width. And then we click OK. Now let's open up the swatches panel and let's set the stroke to black. Now of course we need to create six more of those shapes. Now before we continue, I want to use another help here in Illustrator. Let's go back to view and let's go all the way down here, snap to grid. Let's turn this on so every single shape we create will snap to the grid. That means when we set up our pattern, our shapes and the distances in between, we can really use the grid help us to align everything here. And now if I select the shape here and move it, you can see that it snaps it to the grid. Now let's start creating those shapes. Let's start with the first starburst shape here. The easiest way here in Illustrator to create this is to use the stroke. You might wonder, how am I going to do this with the stroke? We need the shapes. Let's open up the stroke panel and let's select a dashed line. For example, let's set the dash to 9 points and the gap to 5. You can play around with those numbers. And then we're going to increase the weight. Now watch what happens. If I go and increase it to 40 points, for example, you can see we are getting a starburst shape. And the more we increase the weight, the more we're going to achieve the effect that we want to recreate here. So let's set it all the way up to 80 or maybe even higher to 100. The higher you set it, the more the gap here in the middle will be closed. So let's set it all the way up to, let's say to 150 points. The weight number here really depends on how big your object is. So you might have to play around with it a little bit. After that, we're going to select the shape and we're going to create a copy. So I'll press the optional Alt key, keep it pressed and move it onto the other side. As you can see, it still snaps it into place here. It's not that important right now, but it will be when our shapes are done. All right, so we're going to look at the other shape here. As you can see, we might need some thinner lines. So we select the shape with the stroke, and then we're going to play with the dash. Now, if I decrease the dash point here, you can see that it's going to get much smaller or much tighter. And if I play with the gap here, I can increase the gap in between, and then I can recreate all those shapes. So I think this is a good size here, so let me zoom out. We need one more of those starburst shapes. So I'm going to create another copy again, and then I'm going to play again with the dashed line here. Sometimes we just have to change the values just a tiny bit, just to make it look different. And then we're going to select all of those circles. We're going to Object, Expand. Here in the Expand option, we want the fill and stroke to be expanded. So we're going to press OK. And now we have our shapes. Of course, they're way too big now, and we want to have them snap back into our grid to be the size of 144. Now we have to size down those shapes, so we're going to select one, open up the transform panel, and then we're going to set the width to 144 here and the height to 144 as well. The same we're going to do with the other two. And now they're going to snap again into our grid here. We need another shape for the background color, so we're going to create another circle, the width and the height of 144, We'll fill it with white and set it behind our shapes here. So I'm going to create three copies and then I'm going to select the star shape and the circle and group everything. I'm going to repeat that with all three and then we're ready to create our other shapes. Now let's zoom in here and see what other shapes we need to create. We need to create this shape here. This is fairly simple. So all we have to do is create another circle again. Let's put the fill to black so we can see it better. Then we're going to use the pen tool, set fill to the stroke. And then we're going to create two lines right here into the middle. Then we select all of those shapes, the lines and the circle. And then we're going to open up the Pathfinder panel and then we're going to split it. Now, as you can see here, it grouped everything together, but we have it split into four equal sized quarter circles. Now we can select just two of those, open up the swatches panel, 
and set it to white. And that's how you can create shapes easily here in Illustrator for your patterns. Now I've already created those other shapes. So I'm just going to bring them in and then we continue to create the pattern here in Illustrator. Now here are the rest of the shapes for our pattern. Now of course we have to add some colors. So we need a red, a blue and white. Right now all of our shapes are in black and white. Now I want to share a little trick here with you how you can change colors easily here in Illustrator. As you can see we have seven shapes all together. Then we're going to select all of the shapes. Then we go to edit, edit colors and then we're going to select recolor artwork. Now here in the pop-up we see the both colors that we are having. We can assign new colors via double clicking here or we can go to edit and then move those around here in our spectrum. But the easiest here is to change it is to double click here and choose a new color. Now for example if we wanted a red we would choose the red and then it would show up in here instead of the black. We can choose recolor artwork to check off and on to double check what we're going to see but as you can see nothing is happening. So let me cancel here. We first have to change something with the recolor artwork panel. So let's open it up again. We go to edit, edit colors, recolor artwork. In this little menu here next to the preset where it says recolor reduction options let's open this up and let's see what it says here. We can choose from a lot of presets here, custom, one color, two color, three color shops and so forth. But the thing that we want to pay attention here because our shapes are white and black, down here under preserve white and black is checked. So we want to uncheck that so we can change actually the colors white and black in our shapes. So let's click OK and then here in the colors we're going to set it from one color to two colors. Now I have to double click here to change the color. We can choose the color swatches and then we can choose for example RGB red. Of course if you want to print it you want to work with CMYK but just for demonstration purposes I'm just going to choose the RGB red and as you can see everything has changed now into red. This might be a little bit bright so maybe we're going to scale it down a little bit make it a little bit more muted and then we can click OK. Since we only wanted to change the black as you can see we left the white wide but changed the black into red. And we did this really just with a few clicks. So instead of selecting every single shape and changing the colors on that shape individually, we used the tool Recolor Artwork here under Edit. Now we need one more shape before we're going to create our pattern. And that is this little tiny shape here. Now let's create a rectangle. So we're going to choose the rectangle tool in the toolbar. Let's press once on the artboard so we got our pop up. And let's change the width and the height to 90 points. Now we have created a square and now we need to rotate it. So I'm going to use the free transform tool and then rotate it by 45 degrees. And then we're going up to effect, distort and transform and we're going to choose pucker and bloat. Now here in the pop-up let's check the preview and then let's move the slider of the pucker. And as you can see you can easily pucker it like that. Now let's set it to approximately minus 45% and click OK. Of course this is a live effect so we need to expand it. We'll go back to object, expand appearance. And then we want to change the size again. I keep forgetting that it's always getting a little bit bigger when you use life effects. So back to transform and let's change it back to 90 points for the width and 90 points for the height. And there we have it. This is our shape. Now we just need two more colors, a background color and the color for our little shape that we've just created. Now I'm just going to pick the eyedropper tool and then select a color here in my little example. And now we can set up our pattern. So let's move this out of the way here. Since we're working with the grid and we have sizes here of 144 in width and height, we can easily arrange them. So all we want to do is have a little space in between and then this way we can arrange our shapes and they're going to be equally spaced. Now of course this is a little bit more of a tedious part so I'm going to speed it up. Just sit back and watch and then we're going to create the pattern out of it.
Now we're going to select all of those shapes. Then we're going to Object, Pattern, Make. Now here in the pop-up, let me zoom out. It tiles it right away for us. And as you can see, we have a little bit of a problem here on the borders. Now here in the Pattern Options panel, we can easily fix this. When you look at this icon here, if we select it, we can choose to change the bounding box of the pattern. Now since I still have Snap to Grid on, it easily will snap to the grid. And if I make it smaller, you can see now that we're getting a seamless pattern. Now all you want to make sure is when you choose the Pattern tool here for the bounding box, that Size Tile to Art and Move Tile with Art is unchecked. Now if I want to select the elements here in our pattern here in the middle, inside of the blue outline here, we can just select the elements and move them around if we're not happy with our pattern layout. For example here we have too many of those starburst circles appearing next to each other. So I can just easily move them, switch them since it still snaps to the grid. I can move it into place and change the pattern so it won't double up that much. If I don't like this here as well, I can just literally switch it with any shape I like and it will update the pattern right here live in front of you. Now once we like what we see, we just click done. Now you still have your original shapes here. They haven't been altered. But when you watch now here in the swatches panel, we have a new pattern. And of course it doesn't have a really nice name, it's just called new pattern, but we can double click it. And here in the name, we can just change it to our Christmas pattern. After that, we just click done. And now it has been updated. And now when you hover over it, it would say Christmas pattern. Now, of course you can use this pattern for anything you like. Now, if I draw a rectangle here, it will fill it with the pattern that we've created. Now, if you think that is way too big, we can easily change that with the scale tool. The scale tool you can find here in the toolbar. And all we have to do is double click it. In the options panel here for the scale tool, we just wanna make sure that we just check transform patterns. We have the preview checked as well. And now if I go and change the uniform percentage here from 100%, let's say down to 80 or even more, you can see how it just scales the pattern and not the object itself. And then I just click OK. And now you have a rectangle filled with the pattern, but the pattern we've scaled down by 50%. Now I think we should add actually a background color to our pattern as well because right now it has no solid background. So if that would fall onto any other color, I'll just want to show you. If I had a different kind of background, let's say I had a green background and I placed this behind, you can see it doesn't really work with the colors. It's not bad to have a transparent background with your pattern, but I think it would be much better to have an actual solid background. So all we have to do is double click our pattern, then we're choosing the color we want. Let's say we're going to choose this nice blue here. We'll choose the rectangle tool, and then I'm simply adding a rectangle to our pattern. I set it to the back and make sure it has the proper size, and that's it. Now you can see that our pattern has a solid blue background. Then we click done again, and as you can see here, it has updated our pattern as well. Now before we end this tutorial here, I would like to show you something else. I would like to show you how you can easily make a copy of this pattern and change the colors on the fly. All we have to do is double click our pattern that we've created. We're going to click save a copy. We're going to give it a new name. Let's call it Christmas pattern green. And then we click OK. Now we're still in our original pattern, so we're just going to exit. Simply either click the arrow here on the left or click done. Then we're going back to the new swatches here, it says Christmas pattern green. We'll double click it. And then we're going to select all of our shapes here in the middle. This will select the rectangle we've added with the background color and all other shapes. Then let's go back to edit, edit colors, and then select recolor artwork. So instead of choosing the assigned colors, we're going to edit colors. And let me move this out of the way a little bit. Now watch what happens in the background here. Let's say for example, we do not want to have a blue as a background, we want to have a green. So I'm simply going to select the blue and move it into the green that I like. And of course, I have to choose the other one as well. And now you can see we created a new pattern just with different colors. I could even change the colors of the red here in our circles. Maybe have it a little bit more orange or a little bit more pink. This is really up to you. Maybe a pink works well. Once I'm finished, I click OK. 
and then I just want to make sure that I click done. Now if I make a copy of our rectangle here with the first pattern applied, I simply go and apply the new one, and as you can see, it's the same pattern, just with different colors. And all we did was make a copy of our first pattern and change the colors via the Edit Colors and Recolor artwork. Now just because it was so much fun, let's create another copy. So double click, save a copy, let's call it Christmas Pattern Colorful, then we're going to exit, then we're double clicking the new pattern, we select everything again, we go back to Edit, Edit Colors and Recolor Artwork, back to Edit as well, but this time we want to link the colors. So we just want to make sure that we check this little icon here to link the harmony colors. And then I'll just move one color around and watch what happens. It will recolor everything, the colors are linked, so they move together no matter what you choose. So let's say we have blue in our circles and a light brown in the background. After that we click OK, press Done. I'm going to make a copy here of the pattern, fill it with the new one, and again, you created three patterns out of one. Now here are just a few examples what you can do with Christmas patterns like that. You can use them for Christmas cards, or you can use them for gift wraps, or you can even use them to create elements for your Christmas party. And this is it. We are at the end of this tutorial. I hope you really enjoyed how to create a Christmas pattern here in Illustrator, and I really hope I inspired you to create many more. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and in case you want to share your artwork as well, just leave a link in the comments, and I'm going to post it on the Vector Twist blog. And I'll see you next time.